Hi guys, this is Josh from Elementor, and today I'm going to show you how to use the price table widget. Price table widget is a great widget for any business website that needs to present its products or services in a visually appealing comparable table. In our widgets panel, you will find under Pro Elements the price table widget. Now let's drag it into our page. Now, like any other Elementor widget, price table consists of three tabs. The content tab, in which we can edit the content of the widget, the different parts and different areas of the content. The style tab, in which we can define the styling of all those different elements of the widget. And the advanced tab, where we can find some advanced styling options. Let's get back to the content tab. In the content tab, you will find the header section where there is a title and a subtitle, the pricing section where you can type in the price, choose a currency symbol, choose the period, the features section where you can create a list of features for this uh, product or plan, the footer area where you can find a button and uh, some additional text, and lastly, a ribbon, which is a nice addition for any price table. Now let's check out the details. In the header area, I'm going to type in the title for my plan. And the subtitle. Now let's move on to the pricing section. In the pricing section, I can choose the currency symbol of the price. In this case, it's set to dollar. I can change it to euro or let's say pounds sterling. I can type in the price. In our case, I'm going to go for 1990. Notice how Elementor automatically detects the decimal point and turns the fractional part into a smaller number. If I remove the decimal point, we will get a, f a whole number. As soon as I add a decimal point, it's separated to the integer part and the decimal part. Also notice you can type in a word instead of a number. Let's say free. Note how the currency symbol automatically is not being shown in case of a word. I'm going to stick to 1990. That's going to work for us. Now, in case this price is a sale, I have an option of switching it on then I can type in the original price of this product. Let's make it 39. Then we have the period. The period could be anything really. It could be yearly. It could also be something like per user or even really up to you. I don't think I'm gonna stick with the sale. It's gonna be just 1990. All right, now let's move on to the features area. The features list is a repeater field. It's already populated with three existing items. Each item consists of a text, an icon, and a color picker for the icon. Okay, that looks nice. I'm just going to duplicate this list item. All right, that looks nice. You can change the text for one of them. 
like uh, something like premium let's move on to the next part which is the footer area in the footer area there's a button and additional text so let's type in some alternative text for the button start now and the text uh, the additional text is going to be 30 day perfect lastly i'm going to change the text for this ribbon by typing in 50% off and notice you can change the lo the location the position of this uh, ribbon from left to right or you can entirely hide the ribbon if you're not interested in showing it okay now that we're done entering the content for the price table let's go to the style tab let's have a look at the style options for the header so first thing you have here is the background color you can set the background color for the whole header I'm gonna choose this purple color that looks nice I think I'm also gonna add some spacing some padding at the top and at the bottom of the header I don't want it to go on both sides so I'm gonna make sure the variables are not linked top is gonna be 40 I'm gonna do the bottom 40 as well next I have the title and the subtitle color and typography settings choose a um, maybe a yellow color for the title let's play with the typography a little bit uh, all your usual topography settings here you can see the size the font family the weight transform style line height letter spacing etc I think I'm gonna just change the transform of the text to uppercase to make it a little more prominent and just make it a little larger yeah that looks nice I think I'm just gonna leave the subtitle as it is but if you want you can obviously change the color and the typography for the subtitle as well as the title next we're gonna move on to styling the pricing area so first thing is you have the background color for the whole pricing area just like in the header where you have the purple color set as the background we can set a background color for the pricing area I don't think I'm going to change the background color for this area I'm just gonna leave it transparent as it is we can also change the padding for this area this can be anything we want like 80 will give us a large padding at the top maybe 80 at the bottom this can give us a lot of space for the price we can change the color and the topography for the price area the interesting thing is you choose the color and it affects all those elements together you see the currency and the price itself and the fractional part are all affected by the color change but when it comes to the topography if we change the size notice how it changes it all changes together but the fractional part and the currency symbol are relative to the size of the integer part you need to keep that in mind because afterwards we're gonna see how we can change the size for the currency symbol and the fractional part individually but it's always going to be in relation to the size of the integer part i think i'm going to make this uh, this price in uh, bold font 
So let's make the weight 800. That looks more, more like it. And I think that's pretty good. Now here's the currency symbol settings. The currency symbol, like I said before, if I want to change the size of the currency symbol, it's going to be set as a percent of the integer part. Meaning, if I go for 100%, it's going to be exactly the same size as the integer part. And if I go for 50%, it's going to be exactly a half the size of the integer part. In addition, I can also set the vertical position of the currency symbol. I can choose whether it's going to be set to top, middle, or to the bottom. I think I'm going to go for the middle. And I'm going to keep it at maybe 30 or 33%. Yeah, that looks nice. And I'm going to do the same thing for the fractional part. I'm also going to set it to 33% and set it to the middle. OK, I think I like how it looks. Next, we have the period. The period uh, lettering has its own color setting. And it has the typography control, where I can choose which font and uh, the size and all those other variables that we're already familiar with. And another cool thing is I can choose whether it is displayed below the price or beside it. Let's check that out. That's interesting. OK, so you can see how that can give you some more flexibility with uh, different, uh, different ideas for your design. I think I'm going to keep it below. OK, now let's move on to the next section. The next section is the features part, the feature list that you see right here. Let's have a look at the options here. So just like with the previous two sections, we can set the background color. I'm going to keep it transparent. And we also have the padding. So I can add padding at the top and at the sides, which I'm also going to keep it the way it was. Now I can choose the color of the text in the list. It could be anything. And we can choose the typography settings. We can set uh, different uh, different sizes or different font family or any other typography setting that we're familiar with. As you can see, right now it's aligned to the center. The text align is centered. We can set it to align left or align right. If we set it to any of those left or right alignments, we might want to change the width of how wide does the list go. So if we want it to be a little more centered, we can make the width a little smaller. And now it's nice and centered. OK, the next part is the dividers between each uh, list item. We can choose whether to show those dividers or not. If we show them, we can choose how they look. So here's the style of the divider. Could be solid, like it is right now. Could be double which you can only notice once your uh, weight is bigger than two, like let's say three or more. Now we can see how it's a double line, dotted or dashed. Now again, we can choose the width. We can set the width of the dividers anywhere from zero to 100% of the width of the widget. I kind of like that dashed look, but I think I'm going to keep it a little shorter. That looks kind of nice. And the color works for me too. 
The next option is the gap. The gap between the divider and the list item. So the bigger the gap, the more spacious the list is going to become. I'm going to keep it relatively tight. I think that looks kind of nice. Now let's move to the last part, which is the footer. So in the footer, just like in the previous sections before it, we can again decide what's going to be the background color. which I'm going to keep it clear at this point. We can set the padding. I think I'm going to make the padding a little bigger, but just on the top and on the bottom. Let's make it 50. Maybe 70 at the top. OK. We can choose the size of the button. can make it very small or very large. I kind of like how it looks when it's big. I'm going for the bold look. So I'm going to keep it extra large, like a call to action. I can choose the text color, which I'm kind of happy with at the moment. Again, we can set the topography of the button. And we can set the background color, which I'm going to change to yellow. Or maybe, you know what, let's give it a try. Pink could also work. Blue. We can set a border. Border width, border color. All the regular button settings that you might already be familiar with from uh, other Elementor widgets. I think I'm going to leave it without a border. But I'm still going to change the border radius. Let's make it 60 pixels to get a nice and round button. And if we want, we can also add some padding to the button, change the padding. We can make it any number we want, make it a large padding or a smaller, which I'm also going to keep it at the default. Next, we have the additional info line, which is right here underneath the button, which I'm kind of happy with the way it looks right now. But just let's have a look at the options. There's the color. We can make it any color we want. There's the typography. And there is a margin which we can set. Notice the text here can be can get kind of long, so you might want to take care of the margin at the sides. This is why we have the margin setting here. Now the last thing on the style panel is the ribbon. The ribbon is a real nice cool feature that we added to the price table. We can set its uh, background color. That looks kind of neat. We can set the text color, which I'm currently happy with. We can obviously set the typography. We can make it bold, maybe. And all the usual typography settings. And another thing we can do is add a box shadow to the uh, ribbon. Once we add box shadow, we have a bunch of box shadow um, variables that we can play with, such as the blur, the spread, the horizontal and vertical offset of the shadow, which really only the vertical makes a difference in this case. I'm going to make the color a little, a little lighter. 
just a hint yeah that looks nice also notice we can change the distance of the ribbon from the corner by using this control this way we can determine exactly how far it is from the corner remember we can also choose on which side the ribbon is displayed this is back in the content tab ribbon horizontal position we can always move it to the other side now that covers basically all the different options the standard options of the price table but here is the interesting part the price table is one of those it's one of those widgets where the advanced tab actually plays a big role in the final result if we go to the advanced tab we get to choose a bunch of different settings that can really give it another nice little twist for example we can add some padding notice how the padding adds some extra dimension to the to the widgets look so this can be an interesting idea especially if you choose background colors for the footer or any other area inside the widget let's show you an example if I add a background color to the footer you can see how the padding makes it look more interesting let's go back to the advanced tab we can add a border which is also an interesting idea if we want to make it look interesting let's say border type solid and we can choose any color we want I'm gonna go for the same purple we used for the header and you can see how that makes the whole widget look a lot nicer let's set the border radius You can see how the advanced tab really makes a big difference in this widget. We can add a box shadow, which is also a nice idea. Now, this is uh, pretty much it. The way I suggest to use price table if you want to have other columns, which is the usual case, is first finish with the way you want the general look of how you want the price table to look and only then clone the widget and use it again in the other two columns or four if that's the case and just change the different colors and uh, texts you used for the other columns I'm just gonna show you a quick example I'm gonna remove the ribbon on this one and on that one and let's change the color for the left one I can see how with a few clicks you can change the look of the other plans and give them their unique accent color as you can see price table is a very flexible widget it allows you to create beautiful and unique designs featuring your products and services i hope you've enjoyed this video thank you for watching for more videos and tutorials please subscribe to our youtube channel